Yo, what's up, Bob here. Welcome to the channel. Today we are back on to records that sound great. And I bet you're wondering what choice masterpiece I have for you today. Well, today's record was released October 7th, 1978. Recorded in only 20 days at Basing Street Studio One. It is... Dire Straits self-titled record on Vertigo. This is an Italian pressing and it sounds tremendous. Okay. I have a first US pressing right here and this one absolutely throttles it. Um, if you have the first US pressing, don't be too alarmed. That one sounds really great, honestly. But this particular pressing here, um, more bass frequencies across the board, um, better dynamics, more detail. Uh, just a, it's just a better pressing of the record. I suspect this is a true hot stamper. I also suspect that uh, all the Vertigo pressings are probably better than the US pressing. Um, so, uh, I will put like a comparison clip in, and I'll try to get make that come across. You know, this is a really interesting record. To me, when I hear this, I hear Fender guitars, Fender amplifiers, you know, things of that nature. You know, uh, Mark, David, John, and Pick. Uh, definitely well rehearsed. Um, and when essentially, you know, kind of putting together this kind of introspective, uh, contemplative, quiet, yet rocking um, masterpiece of a record here. You know, Mark is primarily on a 61 Fender Stratocaster with a Rosewood fretboard. He's playing through a Vibra Lux amp with one 12 inch speaker, not the two 10 inch speaker model. Okay, that's very important. There's no reverb on the amp, and uh, probably most of the reverb is probably some type of plate. Um, that the studio had and uh you know this thing is a there's some really tasty tones on here a lot of really tasty um licks played by Knopfler. um you know the way that this thing is set up is if, if you were facing uh the speakers marks primarily on the left David's on the right there. And, you know, soundstage is pretty natural sounding, almost as if you were seeing a band. But mm, there's a little bit of studio stuff going on there. But it's it's just really tremendous recording. You can tell they took their time. You can tell a lot of analog gear was involved. To pro definitely went to tape. It was definitely through some big, awesome analog console. I think it was a, um, I think a Helios desk, and uh, lots of Neumann microphones. I'm sure. Uh, the drum sound is rather dry, probably kind of close mic'd, really toneful, uh, great drumming, 
uh, great hi-hat sound. Sometimes the hi-hats really get on my nerves. Not on this record. Uh, it's a really pleasant hi-hat sound. Uh, the ride cymbal, fairly crystalline uh, sounding uh, situation there. And, uh, you know, Knopfler really making the, these licks pop out. You know, he's a hybrid picker. So what that means is, as opposed to just flat picking everything, he's got, he's using his, these all of his fingers, so... You know that kind of thing he's really pulling and bending those strings and uh, get a lot of real tone out of that uh, that old strat uh, there's some beautiful resonator guitar stuff on here I believe it is a 1938 national style O and uh, sounds really really good you know John uh, he plays a 63 jazz bass uh, I suspect with flat wound strings, you can really hear that solitude in the bass when he's when he's playing. It's just um, you know flat wounds really bring the low end, and that's a type of string, by the way. Um, you know, and it, it's a really great bass sound. And here's the deal: I suspect on the U.S. pressing. They cut the bass frequencies across all the spec the spectrum of all frequencies to try to make the guitar pop a little more and kind of give the illusion that it's maybe a little more of a rock record than it is. Um, you know, there was a lot of rock and stuff going on at the time, and I, I think they thought this was a little bit um, kind of low key, and it would be a little bit more marketable if they um, hyped the guitar a little bit. So. Um, so as a result, I think in the mastering process, they cut a lot of the bass frequencies on the U.S. pressing. But that's just a theory of mine. But really awesome um, songs. We all know these tunes. The Sultans of Swing, Lions, Six Blade Knife. Um, it's it's uh, the Wild West End. I mean, it's a killer record. Uh, I, I really like the, the, the album. And... You know, it's a it's a pretty simplistic thing. I mean, it's basically there's there's a there is a lot of space on the on the record. They it's not really that dense. They left. They all played their parts. There's not a whole lot of uh, like intense overdubbing or anything going on. It's very straight ahead and um, just really. Uh, well performed and well recorded record. I I can't uh, emphasize getting a vertigo pressing enough. This thing sounds incredible. It's not really expensive, you know. When I set out to do these videos, I didn't want to do anything as far as uh, records that were too rare or expensive. I wanted things that were, um, you know, common things that you would see around and. Uh, try to identify some of the pressings and things that I think sound fantastic. Order one. Get, get, jump on eBay or Reverb or Discogs or whatever and just find one of those and get it because it's really, really worth it. Um, you know, if you want to hear some quacky uh, Stratocaster tones play through a Fender amp on the edge of breakup, um, that is, this, this is a great record to hear. That said, Dire Straits, self-titled, beautiful, beautiful sounding record. The Spaceships are your friend. Check out the other um, records that sound great videos. I've got some more coming. I've got a vinyl finds coming. I got a recording vlog coming. I got, we played an out of town show the other night. I'm gonna post some stuff from that. And um, you know, hopefully, I don't get flagged too hard for this video from YouTube, but we'll see. Anyhow, uh, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, leave a comment down below. Yeah, man, 
Dire Straits. If you want to hear some Stratocaster Master Souffle, yeah, Martin Offler's. He's got the recipe. Until we meet again, Bob out.